We have the great honor on SHOT Show TV to have one well-known Olympian and two Olympian wannabes, which is coming up, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but Kim Rohde is with us. Kim has been on many times before, the only American to win six medals at six consecutive Olympians. You're a trap shooter, um, so you're probably pretty good at trap. Well, I've done a little bit of both, all the above, <laughs> trap, skeet, and a lot of hunting. I got to throw that in there. <laughs> I'm not going to compete against you anywhere, that's for sure. But you're doing an interesting thing, Kim. You're very well known in the community. Now you're getting kind of political. You're actually the lead plaintiff. You're from California. I'm sorry. Born and raised. And you're the lead plaintiff in Prop 63, which is that ammo thing in California. Yeah, it's uh, really been a crazy thing that um, has taken place. So I am a third, well, I'm second generation. My th son is a third generation California, born and raised. And unfortunately, um, they preyed on people's ignorance and called it the Safety for All Act is what they uh, tried to tell people on Prop 63. But essentially, it prevents me from being able to get the ammo that I need to be able to compete at the level that we all are, uh, representing our country and winning those medals. And um, unfortunately, I would get my medal, my medal or my um, ammunition from, say, like the NGB USA shooting. Uh, by either having them mail it to me or I would go to a match in Arizona and pick it up and both those are now deemed illegal under Prop 63. And at the amount that I'm shooting, anywhere between 500 to 1,000 rounds a day, um, there's no place for me to sure. purchase my ammo as Gavin Newsom um, tried to highlight. That you can just go buy your ammo at the range. No, unfortunately, no range that I know of sells the ammo. Uh, that I shoot. So it has created a, a very huge problem and unfortunately we're now having to fight it in the court system, uh, me along with 20 other plaintiffs and it's looking good, looking like we're going to win. Well and, and if this were enacted when you were 10 years old, when you actually started shooting shotgun, you wouldn't be where you are now. You, you couldn't have been able to do it. Well I mean that's the thing about this bill is it prevents us from being able to pass those traditions on. I mean you look at the bills that are being passed now, you have Gavin Newsom signing where you have to be 21 years or older to purchase ammo and or a firearm. I look at, I was what, 16 when I went to my first, first Olympics, Olympics right. turned 17 five days before my event. Um, if those laws were in place, I mean, I would not have been able to compete and especially at the level that, that we're shooting. So. It, you know, it's unfortunate. I mean, when you look at what our country was founded upon, those heritages, I hope that my son, who's five, will be able to enjoy the same sport that, that I get to do every day and will be able to pass those traditions on. And that's essentially what we're fighting for. Sure. And speaking of passing on, you have two uh, going to be Olympians coming up, uh, Madeline Bernou and uh, Caleb uh, Lindsay. Madeline, you're from? I'm from Waterford, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, and you're from? I'm from Spring Hill, Tennessee. So Tennessee, and how long have you been shooting? I've been shooting same as Kim since I was about 9, 10 years old. Um, I've been hunting alongside my dad ever since I've been 6 years old, and I love the sport. I grew up trap shooting, got into skeet and sporting clays, and then I found Bunker just a little bit over uh, 4 years ago, going on 5. And how long have you been shooting? Well, my story is a little different. I started shooting when I was in 8th grade. I'm now a senior in college. I was actually, I don't want to say forced to a meeting in my middle school, which is where the team was, but I was taken there against my will, against my better judgment, and I ended up shooting, enjoying it, and moved on to shoot at my high school level, and then again at my college level. So now I'm a full scholarship to college athlete, and I'm on Team USA. I mean, a journey I never thought I would be a part of. That's great. I mean, that's one of the things that you find in, in the shooting sports is that it's passed down. I mean, like you hear her talking about her parents, you know, going out. I mean, much the same for me. It, it, it's really how our sport is traditionally done. And with bills like this, it becomes very challenging sure. to continue that. So you both shoot bunker trap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which is a somewhat, a little bit of a masochistic game as far as I can tell. <laughs> Why don't you explain what bunker trap is? So bunker trap is for, in a short sense, is trap on steroids. If you've ever shot American trap before, extend the house by about 75 more feet and put uh, 14 more throwers in there for a total of 15. You have the same amount of stations, but you add one more behind the line of five and you, sp and you spread them out so they're straight across. And instead of taking five shots at every station, you take a shot and you switch to another station. So you have a total of five passes instead of just one pass like trap where you shoot 
25 at a station and then you move and then you're done after the 25. It takes about 30 minutes around and it is t um, entirely computerized. So a computer will basically, um, you'll put in the amount of shooters and what station they start at and a computer will throw your targets for you. The targets are set. You have a right from the far left thrower, a straightaway from the middle, and, uh, and a hard left from the third thrower for each station. So, so Caleb. Yes, sir. How, how much do you practice? I would say in a week, getting ready for a match, about five days a week. About five days a week? Yes, sir. How many plays do you throw? I couldn't give you a rough estimate. It's a, a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. a lot. How much do you practice? About the same as him, um, if not a little less. I mean, we travel so much, but we love to get to the range and as go much to school. as possible. Yes, sir. I am a full-time student. Yeah. So that's, that's really a challenging thing. What do you find to be the most difficult, the most challenging part of all of this? The most challenging part is just keeping up on assignments and tests. I mean, right now, being here, um, representing USA Shooting at SHOT Show, I'm missing about three tests and a million homework assignments that I'm going to have to make up when I go back. And I shoot the, for the same collegiate team that Caleb does, and we are leaving for Savannah, Georgia next week, Thursday. So I'm going to have to go back, make up the tests, get ahead, and do the same thing all over again in just a matter of four days. Caleb, it, it's a mental game. Really. Absolutely. There are people who are outstanding shooters, but they, they just can't shoot competition. Yes, because sir. they're only outstanding when everything goes okay. Absolutely. So how do you prepare? I mean, what do you do? The mechanics of shooting is partly part of you. You just have yes, to be good, and then you work on it. But the mental aspect, how do you deal with, with that, getting ready for that? So I've done through, I've gone through several mental, I guess, trainings, where it'd be reading books or going through like certain coaches like seminars. I know our coach has done several mental trainings with my collegiate team, as well as I shoot for a VISTA or CTC program through USA Shooting, and he's done several um, different training sessions for us. I mean, building your mental game to me is the most important thing you can do in the clay target community. Sure. And so was that the same for you? What do you do there? It's the same thing. Um, usually about four to five times a week, I definitely do some um, off, tra off the field training with mental exercises, um, envisioning just me going out on the field without even being there, going through a round in my head, going through finals, just getting myself mentally prepared for if I was there, what would I do and how would I react? Have either of you ever left the country before? I just went on my first international trip last May. I went over to Perpetto, Italy to compete at the Junior Grand Prix for cool. USA Shooting. Yes, sir. How'd that go? It went very well. Um, I ended up winning my first international medal. I took first for women, and I've never seen um, the international flag, or our American flag, go up on stage while I'm standing there with the national anthem playing. So I, cool. had, <laughs> I had tears coming down my face, yes, sir. And, um, I ended up taking first in the mixed team with my teammate Dale Royer, and then our women's team actually placed third. And then I ended up going to Korea for the world championships um, along with Kim last August. So, Good for you. Yes, sir. Have you ever left the country? I have not, uh, but I am hopeful at this next selection match. Well, 2020, Japan. Yes, sir. Uh, and that's, that's a very different culture. I've been to Japan many times. I think you'll find it interesting. But, uh, yeah. And you'll do a lot of traveling if you pursue this route. Ask him. <laughs> yes, yes. But you know, it's so amazing to hear their stories. I mean, and the passion that they have and the dedication. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's shooting or track and field, whatever. That same passion lives in every athlete, overcoming the obstacles when everybody says you can't. And, you know, seeing that flag go to the top of the pole, oh, yeah. there's nothing like it. So. I mean, I'm honored to be up here with them, and uh, hopefully we can win many more medals and bring many more golds back to the U.S., because at the end of the day, that's what, what it's about, They're the red, white, and blue that we wear on the back of our vest. Well, and, and the great thing about this sport is exactly what you're doing. You're in a position where you, you're world famous. You, you are the, realistically, you're the best at what you do. And yet, you're to, and with your practice schedule and everything, your travel schedule, you still take the time to bring new people, mentor them, and that's what's so very important in this, that those who are try and help those who aren't. Right. Because, I mean, that, you know, when you look at how we all learn, we learn from a relative, from a family member, sure. from a friend. I mean, it's not something that's being taught in schools. It's not something that you really, you know, learn about and through reading. I mean, you really learn how to do it by going out there and putting that first step and stepping up to the line and actually trying it. And at the end of the day, um, that's what makes our sport so fantastic, are the people, the places, and just the camaraderie and the fun that we get to have every day. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. 
one of the world's great athletes and two gonna be world's great athletes right here on our stage. And for SHOT Show TV, I'm David Lombardo.